Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in, I don't know if it's the former paradise or not, of South Austin, Texas. And the little dog and I are enjoying the fruits of Agenda 21 in our new home in the Williamson Creek Greenbelt. You might want to go look at the other video I just posted of our new home for the end times. But so today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. And since I did my wacky conspiracy rant yesterday, today I'm coming in a dollar short and a day late with my very first economic meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the mainstream media <clears throat> finance pages for more evidence of how this uh, how the, the global industrial economy otherwise known as the new world order is pulling out all the stops to take down a planet and the opening of the age of Trump the age of Trump and uh, it's have kind of a hodgepodge you know the it's been kind of quiet in the business world over the past couple of weeks, so all of these money grubbers are <clears throat> just getting back to work. <coughs> so let's see what it looks like on the first real business day of 2017 here in the mainstream media. I enjoyed this story from uh, Market Watch by this fellow named Tim Mullaney. It looks like the, the police choppers might have found me. I, I have crossed the police line. It looks like the, I don't know if that was the Austin Police Department or the U.S. Army. Anyway, getting back from uh, that little interruption here in Paradise to this story from Market Watch. You know, he's responding, of course, all of the, the stories today are about this bull stock market. Oh, shit, I forgot my bullshit detector button. But anyway, so this is this market analyst, Tim Mullaney, uh, ringing out his own bullshit detector button on the U.S. stock market. U.S. stocks riding a bull market in corruption and I could do a whole rant about this I, I will try to remember to put the link on to you to for anyone who doesn't understand what's really going on in the in the uh, stock market according to Tim I'm just gonna start this out I'm an American full of pride for president-elect Donald Trump and his big big 10 percent stock market rally since the election. Now, imagine my pride if that had actually happened. Yes, and so what he breaks down is, is the real stock market rally, uh, which is, quote, rooted mostly in corruption now and the promise of corruption later and a rally built on corruption is bound to fail here is why and then he breaks it all down looking at financial stocks looking at energy stocks looking at big pharma stocks uh, getting to the bottom of this story the market is usually one of many things that makes you, to borrow Trump's Twitter wording, hopeful to be American because it's typically a monument to the creativity of our Elon Musk's and Stephen Jobs's. Right now, something else is happening in the stock market. It is ugly. It is cynical and it won't work. So there you go. And speaking of things that 
that that won't work. This is just my continuing rant on this subject. This is uh, from I don't know who the Zach's Equity Research. Oil rigs in the U.S. rise to the highest mark in a year. Uh, you know, so many stories. You know that that oil because of these OPEC cuts, that oil today is trading at its highest that it's been in a year and a half as all of these OPEC and non-OPEC countries, you know, to get the price up are claiming, claiming that they're gonna start cutting back on production. Uh, I won't reach for my imaginary bullshit button quite yet. So obviously, what is the U.S. at the opening of the age of Donald Drill Baby Drill Trump? They are uh, celebrating OPEC and all those other guys cutting back so they can move up and, 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 and take up the, quote, vacuum being created. Uh, there you go. O oil rigs and U.S. rise for the highest mark in one year. Oil, meaning the price of oil, has started gaining momentum after OPEC and non-OPEC players joined forces to curb crude production in the wake of a supply, gl supply glut. And this was undoubtedly the most important step taken last year to restore uh, the crippling crude. Now it seems that U.S. shale companies huh, are in an advantageous position to beat OPEC and Russia in the bid to raise production. No shit, Sherlock. In fact, U.S. players have already started gathering in oil plays as evident by the fact that these have witnessed the maximum number of oil rigs here in the U.S. since December 31st, 2015. Uh, you know, is there, am I fundamentally not, not getting something here? Um, The president, the, the present state of affairs is being considered by many as an opportune moment for U.S. shale players to outpace OPEC in the race for production share. With the cartel's output cut, U.S. energy companies are well poised to take advantage of higher oil prices in the coming days by producing more oil. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, how many rigs? Rigs engaged in both exploration and production in the U.S. totaled 658. 658 in the week ended December 30th. This was up five from the previous week. And there you go. Uh, guys, figure it out for yourself. From big oil to big coal, coal mining firm Ramaco, don't you love that name, Ramaco, files for IPO. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, it, it, it may seem like a bit of wishful thinking that a new coal miner has filed for an initial public offering. Ramaco Resources Incorporated is a Kentucky-based mining firm, uh, which on December 29th, uh, in its filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the company said it expects to begin commercial operations in the first quarter of 2017 
with annual production of 1.1 million tons of metallurgical coal. There you go. Aimed at a target customer base of U.S. steel mills and coking plants. Um, Coal miners produced 66, in the U.S., U.S. coal miners produced 66 million tons of metallurgical coal in 2015, uh, of which 46 million of the 66 million tons were, take a wild guess, exported to China. Yes. Um, President-elect Donald Trump heavily promoted his plans to revitalize the coal industry. So the timing of Ramaco's IPO filing is probably not accidental and it's time to start looking for a Trump tweet on how coal mining is already coming back and he isn't even in the Oval Office yet. There you go. So the uh, the shale oil frackers, the coal miners, the uh, bank stocks, energy stocks, big pharma stocks, the cheerleading has already begun waiting for the age of Trump to begin in 17 days till doomsday. So how is Beijing celebrating the opening of 2017? Let's move here to China, see how things are looking. In the opening bell of China, Beijing welcomed 2017 from beneath a blanket of smog. Beijing residents rang in the new year from deep inside a cloud of hazardous smog. Air pollution in northern China was so heavy over the new year weekend that authorities on Sunday canceled dozens of flights at Beijing's main airport, suspended buses, blah, blah, blah. Uh, smog levels uh, tend to spike in China's northern province during the chilly winter months when residents use more coal-fired power to heat their frigid homes, filling the skies with small particles that can damage people's lungs and hearts. There you go. So that's how 2017 kicked off in China. How did 2017 kick off in Egypt? Kind of like the same way it kicked off here in the U.S. Egypt inks, Egypt inks oil and gas exploration deals worth $220 million. This is Egypt's oil minister has uh, signed three offshore oil and gas exploration and production deals worth about 220 million. No shit, Sherlock. The agreements are signed with super major BP, as well as France's oil company and Italy's oil company, uh, for exploration blocks in the Egyptian Mediterranean Sea. The deal is for six new wells to be drilled offshore of Egypt. Yes, this, uh, this is how Egypt is, uh, is honoring its commitment to uh, cutting fossil fuel and, and, and greenhouse gas emissions from Egypt to Costa Rica. I've, I've mentioned this story once or twice. And here we go again, guys. Uh, I, I forgot to bring my bullshit detector button with me for this rant. You better believe I would be uh, 
slamming it here. You know, the Young Turks, the Young Turks were, were, were sitting uh, there uh, braying their ignorance about this, cheering on uh, this fucking horse shit. Uh, many versions of this story. This is mashable, uh, sounding as clueless as the Young Turks. Costa Rica ran almost entirely on renewable energy in 2016. Costa Rica ended 2016 on a particularly green note. You can hear the bullshit detector button going. Uh, the Central American nation ran almost entirely on renewable energy. They, they actually did for 250 days last year. The country's power operator uh, said renewable supplied over 98% of Costa Rica's electric, uh, electricity for the year. And now the clincher, the country of about 5 million people, gets most of its electricity from large hydropower facilities, which are fed by multiple rivers and heavy seasonal rains. Yes, hydropower. Do you get it? It is hydroelectric power this renewable, green, earth-friendly uh, energy. You know, I, I wrote a, a guidebook to uh, Costa Rica's waterfalls. I say back in 1992, I've mentioned it. Back in 1992, while I was, you know, going through these absolutely gorgeous gardens of Eden uh, out in these Costa Rican rainforests, you know, just every gringo's fantasy, time after time, you know, I was hearing these stories that uh, in a few years that the, these gorgeous waterfalls on these wild, untamed rivers were going to be turned into hydroelectric dams. And that is exactly what has happened as Costa Rica uh, being held up by the United Nations as like the the world leader in honoring its Paris climate agreements by turning from fossil fuels to hydroelectric power as these goddamn hydroelectric dams from Costa Rica to Brazil all over this planet damming up wild and free rivers, flooding out millions upon millions of acres uh, of rainforest and every other kind of goddamn forest left on this planet. And, you know, absolutely obliterating entire ecosystems off the face of the planet so those motherfuckers at the UN can, can sit here and cheer on hydropower to save the planet from fossil fuels. It, 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 it's one of the biggest bunch of bullshit coming out of the goddamn UN, and, and here's the, the goddamn mainstream media sitting here cheering on this sustainable development goal. It is fucking unadulterated horseshit. Moving along. Yes, little log from Costa Rica to right here in, uh, in our own country, I can't get into this story uh, about how Native American sites thrust into debate over dams. So what they're talking about in this story, guys, just the Cliff Notes version, is what's going on in this country with, with all of these goddamn hydroelectric dams, uh, particularly out there, you know, flooding out these beautiful canyons. All over, all over the Western U.S., you know, with all of the, this uh, ancient Native American, you know, cliff dwellings and petroglyphs and all of this shit, the the ones that aren't actually drowned 
by the rising water. So what it's now done is this opened up all of these uh, sacred Native Americans, all of these fucking yahoos in, in, in their goddamn power boats can can just you can just get on their boats and power and just take their goddamn boats uh, and start defacing uh, all of these uh, Native American uh, things that have been there for thousands of years. This is just uh, one more way that this goddamn bullshit hydro power industry, big hydro, uh, just one more example uh, of the unadulterated horseshit. While, uh, you know, with a straight face, all of these goddamn limp dick mainstream environmentalists claiming that hydropower uh, is going to save the goddamn planet. Okay, this, uh, this story says a lot. 2017, the year of the drone and what they're talking about i've mentioned this i think last in, in last week's rant uh talking about how uh starting with 7-eleven and now amazon how pretty soon that the our skies are going to be filled with these goddamn drones you know amazon.com just took a amazon just took a patent out last week for these giant blimps 45,000 feet in the air, these floating warehouses eight miles up in the sky uh, being a home base for sending out uh, thousands, millions of fucking drones. And uh, th this is no joke, people. It it's going on. Uh, 77 uh, deliveries last year uh, from 7-Eleven, get it, uh, but you better believe, I, I love this, uh, having a laugh, uh, the, about this, uh, you know, 7-Eleven and Amazon and everyone else delivering by drone. The process also highlights the limitations of drones for a delivery model. <clears throat> Basic drones can't carry much weight, of course. Uh, perhaps even more importantly, the drone does not deliver the order to a person, nor does it even put it on the front step and ring the doorbell. Instead, the drone hovers over its destination and then drops the delivery in the customer's yard. The idea of Tylenol, candy bars, and Slurpees raining down on the yard may not seem appealing, but it does minimize the likelihood of damage to the drone from a rough landing. Uh, from, from a rough landing, an overly eager dog or a child enamored with a device flying out of the sky. Of course, if Fido would run over and grab a drone, it's hard to imagine him not running over and grabbing a package of beef jerky, for instance. It is clear that there are still some issues to work out with drone delivery of any sort. And uh, from drone delivery in your backyard, to the Vatican. Uh, what is going on one block, one block from the Pope's house? The loaves and the fillet of fish. Vatican gets its first McDonald's branch as the fast food chain opens up in Vatican owned property by St. Peter's Square. A McDonald's restaurant has opened up just 100 yards from the Vatican State in Rome in a move criticized by cardinals and bishops. Uh, the chain of the fast food giant opened on Friday. Yes. Um, there you go. McDonald's made no amount announcement. I bet. 
there you go. So the, I guess the, the church owns... Uh, McDonald's will pay the administrator of the patrimony of the Apostolic See, which supervises Vatican-owned property, more than $30,000 a month for renting the space. There you go. Uh, Cardinal Elio Segrescia branded the decision to rent Vatican property to the fast food chain aberrant and a perversion. Segrecia told the newspaper that no price is high enough to justify the disgrace of selling unhealthy food that I would never eat in such a place. There you go. Uh, the rent money could be better used to help the areas needy and suffering as the Holy Father teaches. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, from the Vatican to right here in the good old state of Texas, four children die in Texas gas poisoning, others injured. A poisonous gas believed to have been released when someone tried to wash away a pesticide that had been sprayed under a Texas home, killed four children, and left six other people hospitalized. Phosphine gas was likely released when water mixed with the pest control chemical. There, there you go. Uh, <laughs> this is truly the uh, the global industrial economy killing you, and I always get a chuckle out of stories like this winding up in uh, in sub-Saharan Africa for anybody who does not understand how to interpret when you read the, these unadulterated horseshit stories about all of these sub-Saharan economies booming these booming sub-Saharan <laughs> African <laughs> economies. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, anyone to, who does not understand what that means, uh, let the Associated Press spell it out to you. Son of Equatorial Guinea's president on trial in France. Uh, after years of investigation, France on Monday put the son of the president of Equatorial Guinea on trial for corruption. To, uh, he's charged with spending millions of dollars of government funds to feed his opulent lifestyle of fast cars, designer clothes, and works of, works of art, and high-end real estate. Uh, Good Lord. Uh, and then this trial um, came after two after two non-governmental organizations targeting corruption and an association of Congolese citizens living abroad. Uh, let's see. Ten, and also ten years ago against leaders in nearly a half dozen other African countries charging that they used state funds during or after their tenures to buy properties and luxury goods in France. And this story uh, repeated over and over and over again and it will only be repeated over and over and over again as is uh, everybody from the good old US to China to India uh, you know pouring money into sub-saharan Africa so uh, so these corrupt fuckers can just loot the you know loot the damn uh, treasury and run off and buy a bunch of goddamn mansions from Paris to Beverly Hills 
while 98% of the people live in mud huts with no electricity. That is the definition of a booming sub-Saharan African economy. But speaking of a booming economy in mud huts, I gotta wrap up this rant because me and the little dog have to go scrounge up a tarp to uh, put a roof on our new house. Uh, so I am going to uh, wind up this year's first economic meltdown roundup rant and tomorrow I will be back at you from paradise with my first climate change meltdown roundup rant for 2017 as we tick closer and closer to doomsday on January 20th. Bye guys. Nice little dog.